So first thing we're going to do is put this aluminum sleeve in the slider there. And in the port tube, go ahead and put our damper in there and just let it bounce around like so. And then we'll feed this in here. Making sure that we pick up that sleeve. Then we put the slider bushing on. And this ring. I'm just going to push those in a little way. Now as far as the oil seal goes, check the manufacturer's directions, but generally you can kind of tell which way these go. They are directional. Um, this one, the writing goes up. You can see that the bottom is, is different. Plus you can also kind of look at the way that this should scrape the oil and, and the way these ridges are set that the sharp point is down. I'm going to put a little fork oil on the outside and inside of that. This fork oil is just going to help with the installation. Slide this down. They do have tubes that you can buy. They're made to push these seals in. If you don't have that, if you've got a piece of pipe that will sit over your fork tube and press down on there, that's always a great option. But really, what we're trying to do is just seat that seal in. I don't have a pipe that's clean enough on the inside that will go down through there. So I'm going to use just a piece of flat bar that I put a little tape on. And all I'm doing is working the seal in evenly, working my way around it. I just need to get this far enough in here so that I can get this retaining clip locked in that groove. So it needs to go just a little bit further, but we're close. And you'll know you're in if you see that that retainer clip has slipped in the groove all the way around. Of course it does have these tabs that stick out. Now we're going to put the new dust seal on. And I'm also going to put a little bit of fork oil on there to help lubricate it. And then we're just going to seat that. I've got the fork back in the vise. We're going to finish dry assembling this. And by dry assembling, I mean I'm not ready to put the fork oil in just yet got the damper rod inside already. Next thing that goes in is the spring. Now if you extend the fork, that spring
should go just about flush there. Take your cap, just put a slight bead of bork oil on there. We're going to push this down in and then put our circlip in there. That'll go in relatively smooth as long as you get that cap below that groove. Now don't put the cap on just yet. I ran into a bit of a snag on this project. I assumed that the dealer would have these crush washers in stock. They don't. The problem with this crush washer is it doesn't come standard in my crush washer kit. The closest one I've got in there is this one here, which is too big on the outside diameter. The inside diameter is fine. So I tweaked around a little bit with this crush washer here. Now, I've never been able to increase the inside diameter of these successfully, but I created a little jig, if you will, on the drill press, and I was able to mill down a couple of these so that the outside diameter is the same as that one. I'll put together a separate video to show you how I pulled that off. I've got the fork flipped upside down now in the vise and we're going to put our bolts back in. I'm going to add a little bit of Loctite to these. This will help seal them up and these are going to be torqued to 15 foot-pounds. Now when you use the Loctite I would either use a low or a medium strength something that can be broken apart with just normal tools. And what I want to do with this, after I get it torqued, I want to let this fork sit as long as I can so that Loctite can set up. With the lower Allen bolt in place and the thread locker cured, we're going to go ahead and disassemble this top cap with the circlip so that we can add the fork oil. With the fork dry on this model, it takes 14.39 to 14.56 ounces. So let's go ahead and add that fork oil. We're going to use a 10 weight fork oil. So I've added the volume of fork oil that's listed in the manual. But it also suggests that you manually measure the volume. So I'm going to pump out any air bubbles, make sure that fork oil is down in the fork entirely. Then we're going to check the measurement from the top of the fork tube by compressing this fork completely. Now I don't have a tool that's built specifically for measuring this but I'm going to use my combination square. The manual suggests that this oil level down in here should be 5.83 to 5.98 inches from the top. So 5 and 7 eighths is about 5.875. So we're just going to place this down in here and see if it's touching the oil. I don't have any oil on there, so I'm going to go to the other end of that range, which is pretty close to 6 inches. It's 
So it looks like I need to add just a little bit more oil. There we go. That was just right. Now we can torque these clamp bolts. This upper one gets torqued to 15. The lower one gets clamped to 25 foot-pounds. The axle nut gets torqued 80 foot-pounds. The front axle pinch bolt gets torqued to 15 foot-pounds. There we go. We're all done. Thanks for watching.